Let's take your home network that looks like this and turn it into something like this, or at least as close as we can. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. We are starting off another networking series where we're going to go through the process of setting up a basic home network. So if you are a beginner, you are in the right spot. We're gonna talk about all the terminology, all the devices that you need, how to set them up, how to get them working. It should be a pretty helpful video. Now, the videos I'm going to be doing in this networking series, I am going to put into a playlist for you guys to follow along. So be sure to subscribe if that's something that you are interested in. We're going to be going through a lot of really cool things, helping you get faster speeds out of your home network, testing out the best Wi-Fi routers out there, letting you know which one is the best one, and then also upgrading my home network to a faster 2.5 gig setup. So all of those will be in the playlist as they are being released. But this is the beginner video. This is the one that's going to kind of help catch you up. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware that you're going to need and explain how all of it works together. All right, let's go through and talk about a few different scenarios with our home network setup. These are cable modems or gateways. This is what is going to be bringing internet into your house. We've got two different setups right here. This is just a basic cable modem. We're going to be having coax come in. So internet coming in through here, and we're going to have it coming out through these ports. Now with this one right here, there is no kind of firewall. There's no protection. This is just raw internet coming in, raw internet coming out. It is not safe unless you get a router set up, but we'll be talking about that in a sec. The next thing that we have is this beast right here. This is kind of an all-in-one device. It's called a gateway. This is going to be bringing internet into it. It also has Wi-Fi built into it, and it has the router with firewall for full protection. Taking a look at the back right here, we see that we have got internet coming in through here. We've got our four ports coming out of the back. Lots of options for us right here. And like I said, there is a built-in Wi-Fi and a built-in router, which is going to give us firewall for protection and a DHCP for handing out IPs to all the devices on our network. Now, we're gonna go ahead and set this one off to the side right now, and we're gonna talk about branching off of this one right here. So, what we need to do next is we need to pick out our router or our Wi-Fi. All three of these options can be plugged directly into our cable modem right there. This is just a small, cheap little Wi-Fi device. If we take a look here on the back, we've got internet coming in. We've got four extra ports that we can plug into the back of here if we need to. But inside of here is going to be a router. Inside of all three of these are gonna be routers that are gonna keep us protected. So it is very good that we have this set up to a router. Not only is it giving us Wi-Fi, but that extra security. On the back of this big boy right here, we're going to have some extra ports and you can see there's antennas everywhere. This is going to give us a lot more coverage and some better speeds, but kind of the latest and greatest in home internet, depending on the size of your house is going to be something like this. This is a mesh Wi-Fi setup. So you're going to get three of these in a box. What you're going to do is you're going to plug one of these into our modem right here. So that's going to plug into here. The other two devices that you get, they look exactly the same. You're gonna place around your house. All three devices are going to connect to each other wirelessly and give you the best coverage that you can get out of any of our three router Wi-Fi options right here. Mesh Wi-Fi is gonna be the way to go. I did a full video on Mesh Wi-Fi. If you guys wanna know more about it, you can check that out. I will link it in the description, but I would recommend to go with Wi-Fi. Now this is kind of a lower end budget version We've got two ports here on the back. It's going to allow us to either set up a backhaul, meaning that we can connect all three of ours together with Ethernet cables for a faster connection, or they do all connect to each other wirelessly. Now, what if we need more ports? Like we saw with this one right here, this one had eight ports in it. This one I think had four. This one's only got two. If you need to get more things plugged in, you can always branch off of here. So we're gonna plug Ethernet from here into one of our switches, essentially, a switch is just going to split the signal with all the ports right here. So we're going to take an ethernet cable. We're gonna plug it from here into either port one on this switch, where we got a 16 port switch, port one into there. And that is going to give us the ability to connecting a lot of devices plugged in. Now, a couple of things I wanted to point out with these two devices right here. 
This is a newer switch that's going to be a gigabit switch, meaning that it is going to transfer at a thousand megabits. And that's pretty much the standard of home networking these days. We've got an older switch here. This older switch, instead of being a thousand, it's either going to transfer at 10 megabits or 100 megabits. Very slow. You want to avoid that if you can. So if you have anything that is listed 10, 100, replace it, get rid of it, switch over to something that at least says gigabit. This is what we're going to be installing in the closet that I have right now. In fact, let's go ahead and take the things that we have here. We're going to go with a gigabit setup because that's kind of the standard right now. So we're going to be taking my AT&T gateway. I will be bypassing the DHCP router that is inside of this and turning off the Wi-Fi because I do want to be using my own mesh Wi-Fi system. So we'll be setting up this with it. And then I'm also going to be branching off into a 16 port switch because I do have the whole house wired up. So we're going to be utilizing this for our setup. So let's go ahead and head over there right now and get everything set up. Now, depending on when you buy your house, you may have something like this or like this. For me, I have this network enclosure. Now, I know a lot of people ask about it. Mine is the brand Open House, and this is just kind of built into the wall. So it is between the joists here into the wall. It is 14 inches across, 36 down. So that way, if you guys are interested, that is what I have. But if I open this up, this is what it looks like inside. We have got cables that are running through the house. We've also got all of our coax cables. So we've got our coax cable here. These have been around forever. You should be familiar with these. And then we have got our ethernet cables that are running through the house. Now, if we take a look at these cables right here, we can see that these cables are category 5E. And what that means is they can handle a transfer speed of up to one gig, which is perfect because that is what we're setting up here in our network right now. Now I do have a power down here. We do have a couple of other things. So if I did have a telephone, this is a telephone master hub that all of these cables were initially plugged into, but I'm not going to be using that. I have no phones in my house. We're just using cell phones. So I'm not even going to be using that thing. But if you do see it in there and you're not using phones, you can go ahead and just ignore that right there. So what I need to do is we need to get internet gateway set up in here. Then we're going to connect that to our Wi-Fi. Then we're going to connect that to our switch. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up and plugged in right now. And I'll show you what my setup is going to look like. All right, the first thing that I want to set up is my AT&T gateway. So this is what it look like right here. And I've got this little shelf that I want to put it on. What I like to do is there are two things that I like to connect all of my devices with. And that is going to be two different types of command strips. So I've got... These command strips here, which are kind of like Velcro on one side, actually on both sides of it, those do stick together. And then I've got just the sticky regular command strips right here. I use these for the switch because the switch isn't very heavy and I'll use those up top here to put in the switch. And then these cables also help hold it up too. But because the gateway is so heavy, I'm gonna put it on this shelf and then we're going to stick it using these command strips right here. So. Let me go ahead and get those connected and then we'll go ahead and connect the power cables and the rest of the cables. Okay, so now the gateway is plugged in and ready to go. I've got my ports on the top. My cabling is labeled right here and this one, even though we can't see behind the shielding, is listed as feed. And what that means is that is the cable that is coming in from the street into my house so i am going to plug it into my modem up here into the feed section so now we have got the internet coming into the house it is being plugged in for me the next thing that i wanted to do is manage all of these cables now i do have holes up on the top here so for the most part i want to just shove everything up and out of the way because i'm not going to be using any coax as far as all my ethernet, now it's nice here because I can pull these all the way down. There is a lot of extra room up there, but what I wanna do is I just want to kind of get mine up and out of the way because we're gonna be putting our switch up right here. Now, when I was mounting my gateway, I did wanna leave a slight little gap right here to feed any cables that I want for cable management down there. But next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi, which is going to be down here. 
we'll put the Wi-Fi in, we'll get the switch in, we'll get this thing all wrapped up. Okay, we've got my 16 port switch. This one is from TP-Link and I have got my double-sided command sticky on the back. We're gonna go ahead and mount this right here in the middle. That's probably good right there. So I will push that in. That is good to go. We're gonna get our power set up. The main power is right here. All right, everything is now plugged in and I kind of want to show you now what the setup is looking like in a little bit more closer detail, we'll say. So as we saw, I connected up my gateway, we powered it in and then we brought the internet in from the feed that is coming in from outside. The next thing that I wanted to do on the top here is that we are going to take a cable out of here. These are all going to send internet out to the house. Instead of plugging directly into this, I have a cable running out and it is running into the back of my Wi-Fi. Now, no matter what Wi-Fi that you want to set up, as long as it has a router built into it, we've got our router and everything is in here, fully set up, ready to go. So my black cable is coming in down here. And then I've got a blue cable now branching off of that. And it is coming all the way up, weaving through here. And it is plugging into port number one on my unmanaged switch. Now, I do want to mention that really quick. There are two types of switches. There is managed and unmanaged. Typically for most people, I would say just get an unmanaged switch. And essentially what that means is that you don't need to then log into the switch and configure any of these ports. It is unmanaged, meaning it is plug and play. You just plug the cable in and it's ready to go. It is the easiest way and something that I would definitely recommend for most people. Unmanaged is the way to go. Now, if you get a managed switch, you can set up things like VLANs and QoS, different things like that. But for the most of the basic users, home users out there, you're not gonna need it. So don't worry about it. Unmanaged is the way to go. So we've got our unmanaged switch right there. It's running to all the rest of the cables in the house. Now I do have a couple of extra ports right here. Let's see, we've got three extra ports here for me to use. And the good thing about that is that I am going to be plugging in my NAS. So this is a network storage. We've got four hard drives in each one of these. This is going to plug into my switch down here and then I can access this NAS from anywhere, from any computer in the house, from any phone in the house and even from outside the house with the Synology. So this is the new one right here. We've got the Synology DS923 Plus. This is the latest and greatest of the one that I am primarily using for all of my storage needs. It is awesome, love it but that is going to get plugged in to one of these up here. Okay, the next thing that I wanna do is that we're just gonna tidy up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these cables. We're gonna get some more things patched up on here and it just mounted up nice and we'll see it in a sec. <music> Okay, so here is my cleaned up networking enclosure. We've got all the cables run where they need to be. Everything is plugged into my switch going to each room of the house. Now there were a couple other additions. I've got a security camera set up right here that needed to get plugged directly into my gateway. That's fine. Everything else is going to be coming directly through the router. I also did not want to put my satellite router inside of this metal enclosure so instead of putting it here i'm just going to have it sit outside here on this box and that way it's going to have a better signal strength throughout the house here maybe one day i'll actually move it over into that corner since most of the house goes that way but that is the simple network setup that we have hopefully this helps you out and at least have an idea of how these things are connected and how you need to get your setup done 
If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. If I'm not able to get to it, hopefully somebody in the community is going to be able to help you out. Now, there's one last thing that I want to show you. So we saw what it looks like in my networking closet. Here's what it looks like inside one of the bedrooms. I've got my ethernet cable coming out of the wall right here, but I don't have mine plugged directly into a computer. Instead, I have it running along the wall here and it is actually being plugged into another switch. So I get asked the question a lot, can you connect two switches together? The answer is yes, but it's not ideal because if we think about it, this port right here is plugged into a one gigabit ethernet port. That is what is going to be sharing this right here. I branch it off of here and I go into this thing. And this thing is now splitting that one gigabit connection. So this blue one right here is going to my computer. I am not going to be getting the full one gigabit connection going into my computer because it is being split among all these other devices. Now these other devices are going to be things like smart home hubs for like Philips Hue or Lutron or smart things. Things that actually aren't taking up a ton of bandwidth, but it is taking away some. So do keep that in mind. Try to not connect switches together unless you have to, or at least put it in an area where the devices that are going to be sharing it don't need a lightning fast connection. All right, so that's going to round up our home networking for beginners video, but there's a lot more videos coming that should be able to help you out. I also did a video series last year talking about a lot of things about Wi-Fi and protecting yourself and setting up the best Wi-Fi. So be sure to check out that playlist from last year. I will link it below. Also, stay tuned for the playlist that is going to be coming out following this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.